Hello from OpenVPN. This tutorial will focus on using OpenVPN Access Server with local database authentication and Google Authenticator for two-factor auth. Access Server has four types of authentication available. If I click on the drop down here, you'll see General, which is our local option, PAM, Radius, and LDAP. I'll click on General here and you see that Local is in fact enabled. Now Local refers to a SQLite 3 database that is launched with the Access Server package. No further configuration is needed to use this option. So you can go ahead and start creating users immediately and they can connect. Now on this same page further down is the setting for Google Authenticator. Mine is already set to yes. But if this was no, all you have to do is one click to yes, save the settings, update the server, and Google Auth is now enabled. Before we create an actual user and connect, let's talk about some of the IP address assignments. So VPN settings under the configuration menu, this is our global settings page. The dynamic IP address network right up top here, this is the address that all connected users will be assigned an IP from. If no, other, if no other configurations are made, if no other subnets are specified, this is where the IPs will come from. Below that is the static IP address network. It's an optional setting. And you can specify a subnet here and then set a static IP from within that subnet within the user permissions. This is useful if you have a network that requires uh, a connected user always has the same IP. And then below that, another optional setting is the group default IP address network. So by default, if a group is created, the members of that group, the users that are attached to that group, will receive an IP address from within this subnet. Moving down to the routing section, the default option when Access Server is launched is yes using NAT. Now that means that users will have access to the private subnets that are listed in this text box. You can list as many as you want, and they will have access through network address translation. We also have a routing option. If routing is chosen, then NAT obviously will not be used. So a couple of static routes are required. And keep in mind that these are global settings. If they are set here, Every connected user will have access to this network and to the or to any resources that are specified here. If you have uh, needs that require different users to have access to different resources, you'd want to configure that further down at the group or the user level. There's three levels of access control in Access Server, and that is the global level, which we're looking at, the group level, and then the user level. Right below that text box is the split tunneling option. This is how split tunneling is configured or turned off. So should client internet traffic be routed through the VPN? Right now it's set to no, which means I have a split tunnel access server. Regular internet traffic will be sent through the default gateway, while private subnets that are listed here will be sent through the VPN tunnel. If I change this to yes and then save those settings, then all traffic will go through the VPN tunnel. The setting below that is by default turned on, and that is should clients be allowed to access network services on the VPN gateway IP address. And this will allow uh, clients to ping the VPN gateway IP, whether split tunneling is on or not. Let's take a look at the client web service settings options. Again, in the configuration men menu, CWS settings. So here is where you can customize the client web service. So you can turn these off or on to show or hide the different types of clients that are available. With all of them enabled, uh, your users, your connected users that go to the client web service will receive an option to download the version 3 for Mac and Windows and the version 2 along with the mobile clients. The different type of profiles available are server locked profile, user locked, and auto login profile. 
Server locked profiles are for connecting to the access server. They are not locked to any particular user. Instead, they're locked to the server. Um, the user will always need to enter their username and password in order to connect because it doesn't have any of that information. These can be useful if the admin wants a general profile that can be sent to multiple different users to be used on different devices. The user locked profile is a profile that is generated specifically for the logged in user and the certificate, username, and password will all be unique to that user. And then our auto login profile. Th these profiles um, are certificate authentication only. They bypass the basic authentication, which is very useful for um, use with devices that need to be connected to the access server that, that act as a VPN gateway, for instance. Now, if I go to user permissions, you see I have a test user set up. Let's go ahead and set up a new one named test user. And under more settings is where we can set the password. And then a very handy option are these radio buttons that will allow the user to change the password um, on their own so that you can give them a basically a one-time password and then that user when they log in can change it. Also is the IP addressing section. Remember I spoke about the static option. This is where you can specify a static IP and then access control. If you did not want to use the global VPN settings, then you could set a subnet within within this text box and then that user would have access to that subnet from here. Okay, I have, I'm just going to get rid of that and go ahead and save this new user. Update the running server. That user is in the database now, and I should be able to log into the client web service with that information. There we go. Remember, Google Authenticator is enabled. Luckily, it's a very easy process. All we have to do is open the Google Authenticator app on a mobile device, scan this QR code, which I'm doing right now, and you will get a one-time password generated. And I'll just enter that. Confirm the code, and there we go, I'm logged in as a connected as a user and I get you see I only have the option of a user locked profile uh, we I did not select server locked profile I'm not an admin and I did not select the the checkbox for auto login profile which is right here these checkboxes so I can go ahead and download that profile I already have a client on this machine And I'll import that one that I just that I just downloaded. Should be right here. There it is. There's my new server. I will connect and allow the connection, of course. Because it's a user locked profile, I need to authenticate under the new code. And there we go. I'm connected to our access server. Thanks for watching.